Hello, in this video we're going to look at supply and demand and taxes. Here are the key points. Uh, we're in particular talking about a per unit tax. The statutory incidence of the tax, who the law says is responsible for paying the tax. The tax incidence is the actual burden of the tax. It does not depend on who the law says is responsible for paying the tax. It doesn't matter if the government taxes buyers or sellers, the tax burden is unchanged. A $10 per unit tax placed on sellers will have the same economic effects as a $10 per unit tax placed on buyers. Buyers pay a higher price after tax is imposed. Sellers receive net of taxes a lower price after a tax is imposed. Taxes harm buyers and sellers, although not necessarily equally. Taxes reduce the size of the market. They shrink economic activity. Taxes create inefficiencies, or as we'll later talk about, deadweight losses. The government gains tax revenue from a tax, but the losses to consumers and sellers are larger. So overall, there is an inefficiency. Key points. Buyers will pay most of the tax when the demand curve is relatively steeper or more inelastic than the supply curve. Sellers will pay most of the tax in cases when the supply curve is relatively steeper or more inelastic than the demand curve. So in general, it's the more inelastic side of the market, the market that has the steeper looking curve that will pay the majority of the tax. Because taxes create inefficiencies, a dollar of taxation costs the private sector more than a dollar. So we're going to first look at a uh, tax placed on sellers. A $10 per unit tax placed on sellers will shift up vertically the supply curve by exactly $10. Sellers will now need $10 more per unit to bring any given quantity of output to the market. Why do they need $10 more per unit? Because every time they sell a unit, the firm will have to send a $10 uh, check to the government to pay the taxes. So suppose that, the, suppose that before the tax, sellers required $40 per unit to sell 100 units of output. After the $10 per unit tax, sellers will now require $50 from buyers to sell 100 units because they will only net $40. They'll get $50 from the buyer minus a $10 tax leaves them at a situation that is no different than before the tax. So here is the graphical look at how we're going to analyze taxes placed on sellers. We're going to just shift up the supply curve vertically by the amount of the tax. So this is just a parallel shift. So here at $5. Before the tax, sellers would be willing to bring five units to the market. If there's a $2 tax, sellers will now need $7 to bring that same quantity to the market. They'll need $7 per unit to bring that same quantity to the market. So again, this is an example of a $2 per unit tax. And as we see, the supply curve shifted up by that amount. One error here, and we'll get into this in a minute, one error is that the new equilibrium price is not going to be $2 higher. Okay, so that is a, a, a common error. Uh, people think, well, if the equilibrium price was $5 in the face of the tax, it'll now be $7. We'll show that is not correct. So with a downward sloping demand curve, the sellers cannot pass the entire tax on to customers or consumers in the form of higher prices. So here's a look at it now uh, with a demand curve placed in this diagram. So we're still shifting up the supply curve by $2. So the new equilibrium occurs at the intersection of the supply curve with taxes and the demand curve. The equilibrium quantity at this equilibrium is 4. And buyers are going to be paying $6 per unit now. At one time, they only paid $5 in the face of the tax. Buyers are going to pay more. They're now paying $6. And one thing to keep in mind, although the tax was placed on sellers, it didn't entirely stay there. Sellers were able to pass some of this tax on to consumers in the form of higher prices. Clearly here, consumers are worse off. They're paying more and buying less. Sellers are receiving $4 per unit net of taxes. 
they receive $6 from the buyers. So yes, buyers or consumers pay the seller $6 for the unit, but the seller doesn't get to keep all of that. The seller has to write a check to the government for $2, so leaving sellers now with $4 net of, t net of taxes. Here too then, sellers are worse off. They receive less per unit. At one time, sellers were receiving $5 per unit. Now they're only receiving $4 and they're not selling as many units. So with tax, buyers pay $6 and sellers net four. So we can see those values here on the diagram. Here's the $6 that buyers pay. If we subtract out the tax, this is what sellers net. So buyers will always pay more, sellers will always receive less in the face of a tax. <clears throat> Uh, briefly talk about government tax revenue. So the government is in this market. Since four units are being sold, those four units are being taxed at $2 a piece. So the government is collecting $8 of revenue, four times two. And that is actually given by this area of this rectangle. This is a two by four rectangle here. So we can locate the tax revenue right there. Uh, the tax burden to buyers, well, buyers are paying a dollar more. At one time they paid $5, now they're paying six. And in terms of the, the burden to sellers, the tax burden to sellers, sellers are receiving a dollar less per unit. At one time, sellers were selling the unit at $5 a piece, now only $4. So half of this tax is paid by buyers and half of this tax is paid by sellers. Uh, because both demand curves and supply curves are equally steep here, both 45 degree angles, the tax is evenly split. That doesn't have to be the case, as we'll show later on. Uh, taxes create a wedge between what buyers pay and sellers receive. So uh, I'm not showing the supply curve with taxes here, uh, but as we saw in the last figure, it went through this point right here. And so just ignoring that uh, supply curve with taxes, we can see with a six dollar or with a two dollar tax, buyers pay six, sellers receive four. So this is a, just a simpler way to illustrate taxes. Create a vertical wedge between the supply and demand curves, where the length of that wedge, that vertical w w uh, wedge, equals the size of the tax. So here we see the effect of a two dollar and six dollar per unit tax. So this vertical distance here, this vertical wedge is two dollars, and we can see the effect. Buyers pay six, sellers receive four. If we wanted to see the impact of a $6 per unit tax, we're going to find a vertical wedge that is uh, uh, six units long. That's going to be right here. And we can see that in that case, buyers would now be paying $8 and sellers only receiving $2. All right, uh, let's look at a $3 per unit tax. Um, here I have a, the, you'll notice that the demand curve is slightly steeper than the supply curve. So with this tax, and I'm just doing that vertical wedge trick here, finding where we can find a vertical distance between the demand and supply curve, uh, that is uh, a length of three. So in this case, buyers are paying $7 and sellers are only netting $4. So buyers pay sell, sellers $7 per unit. Sellers turn around and pay the government $3 for the tax, leaving sellers net with $4. And you'll notice here before the tax, the price was $5, equilibrium price. So with this $3 tax, with this $3 tax, buyers are paying $2 of it in the form of higher prices. Sellers are paying $1, $1 of the tax in the, the form of lower prices. So even though sellers write a $3 check to the government to pay for the taxes on each unit sold, sellers are only paying $1 of the tax out of their pockets, uh, while buyers are paying $2. <clears throat> so buyers pay two-thirds of the tax, two divided by three. Sellers pay one-third of the tax, $1 divided by the total tax of $3 per unit, so one-third. All right, moving on. T now let's look at a tax placed on buyers. Okay, the, the big story here is that nothing changes um, in terms of the, the final economic outcome, the tax burden, the tax incidence. But if we want to analyze the tax place on buyers, 
uh, we can think of it this way. A $10 per unit tax placed on buyers will shift down vertically the demand curve by $10. Buyers' maximum willingness to pay will decrease by $10 per unit for any given quantity demanded. Suppose that before the tax, buyers are willing to pay $40 per unit to purchase 100 units. After the $10 per unit tax, buyers will now only be willing to pay $30 to sellers for these 100 units because the net price will be $40. So, sell, uh, so buyers will pay sellers $30 per unit for these 100 units, and then we'll have to pay the government $10 per unit for these 100 units. So, so let's take a look at this. Uh, we're going to place a $2 tax on buyers. This will shift down the demand curve by the size of the tax. So this vertically shifting down of the demand curve is uh, $2 shift down. The equilibrium quantity, like before, is still 4. Buyers are going to pay $4 to sellers and $2 to the government for each unit purchased. So when all, when all is said and done, buyers are still going to be paying $6. So this $4 here, which you might call the equilibrium, yes, buyers pay sellers $4, but buyers aren't done. Now they have to pay the government $2. So when all is said and done, buyers are still paying $6 per unit, just like in the case where the $2 per unit tax was placed on sellers. Sellers receive this $4 per unit from buyers, uh, and... That's it. Sellers don't have to write a check or don't pay the tax. So uh, sellers are no better off in this case than in our first case. So sellers are still worse off. They receive less per unit and they sell fewer units. So again, the, the big story here is everything is identical in this example compared to if the tax was placed on sellers. Okay, that's it. I hope you found this video helpful.